Welcome to 10 On Demand. My name's Neil. I'm Director of Fitness and Education for 10 Health of Fitness. This is your 45 minute intermediate dynamic bodyweight Pilates session. This is an intermediate level. So you should have prior experience in both Pilates and also bodyweight based exercise. If you haven't, then the beginner session may be a better place for you to start. Okay guys, let's go. So this is your intermediate dynamic bodyweight Pilates class. Just behind me here to my right is Gemma, and behind me to my left is Liam. Gemma's going to be showing you the regressions today, and Liam's going to be showing you the progressions today. So to get started, we're going to kneel down. What I'd like you to do is choose the, the, the leg that you feel more comfortable with. I'm going to choose my right. You might like to mirror me. So I'm going to bring myself down into a kneeling position. Now, we're going to be here for a little while, so if you feel that that's uncomfortable, especially for the ankle and the knee that's flexed, you might decide just to sort of pop yourself down on your bum there, okay? If you're comfortable but unable to get as much tension through the ankle as you require, then very simply pop your hands behind you, keep the chest lifted, and just direct a little bit more body weight forwards. Okay? If you're quite comfortable with all of that, you may decide just to hug the knee in and bring the torso as close to the knee as you possibly can. And that will kind of load the ankle a little further. I'm going to just tuck my foot in a little closer so my knee can go over my foot a little more. Okay? So from this position, guys, we're going to just draw a circle. I'm going to go anti-clockwise, but at the moment it doesn't really matter whether you're going clockwise or anti-clockwise. The main thing is, is that we're following a circle around the ankle joint. So imagine this is your foot, okay, and this is my shin bone. I'm just gently drawing a small circle. Try not to couple that circle with a foot, so the foot doesn't really move, it stays stable, okay? Now, from this position, guys, I want you then to draw a circle clockwise, or in this case, this is clockwise, but if you feel as though you need to turn it the other way, go into anti-clockwise, feel free to go the other direction. Okay, and we're going to be doing this for about 10 or 15 more seconds. Really, the reason we're doing this, guys, is just to create a little bit more mobility in the ankle. We're going to be using the ankle quite a lot today, so it's important that we warm it up. Okay, we'll go for three, two, one, bring it back to a fairly neutral position, okay? Now, the knee that's bent in front of you, use the corresponding hand to kickstand behind you. So now we're going to use a little rotational movement for the opposite shoulder. So, from here, you're going to kickstand with a corresponding hand to the knee that's forward, and you're simply going to turn the palm up of the free hand. We're going to then cross the body with the palm facing the ceiling. We're then going to start to turn the palm of the hand outwards towards the side of the room. Now, if this is as far as you can get, then that's absolutely fine, guys. What I want to avoid is any pinching sensation that you may have in your shoulder. If you get to a point of pinching sensation, just simply work around the pinch so you then follow the circle round without creating too much discomfort. Now, as I take my hand out to the side of the room, I'm rotating the palm out so it then slowly comes down to the side of my body, palm out. I'm then going to take that back the opposite direction. So I'm firstly going to take my hand back to the point in which I feel as though there's a bit of a roadblock. I'm going to start rotating the palm of the hand, so the palm of the hand faces the ceiling, but continues to rotate as I bring my hand above my head, and then I'm simply going to bring it in front of me with palm facing the ceiling. So I'm kind of back where I started. I'm going to do that again now. So I'm going to take the palm upwards towards the ceiling. I'm going to rotate it outwards to the side of the room. I'm going to reach back behind me, and I'm going to continue to turn the palm out as I bring the palm outwards, and then my knuckles are now facing the side of my body. Okay, from there, go back in the opposite direction one final time. Remember to rotate the hand, palm faces inwards. We then bring it across the midline with palm facing upwards. Now, from this position, we've finished that exercise. I'm going to kickstand my hands behind me. I'm then going to rock back so I'm able to bring my left foot out, and I'm going to sit in what we call a bear sit position. I'm just going to simply move my feet to where I feel more comfortable. Okay? The wider your legs are, the more inner thigh stretch you'll receive in this position. What I'd prefer for you to do is hold the inside of the ankles. But again, I know that some of you may find that uncomfortable around the inner thigh or possibly around the lower back. So in that case, just kickstand both hands back behind you. Okay? 
From that position, I want you then lifting your eye line to drop your chin onto your chest. As you drop the chin onto the chest, we're then going to move to the left by scraping our chin along our collarbone until we look as though we're looking over our left shoulder. I'm then going to rotate my eye line upwards towards the ceiling, across the ceiling, towards the right shoulder. I'm kind of looking, almost looking as though I'm looking down into my back right pocket and I'm going to graze my chin across my collarbone back to start. This time we're going to go to the right. I'd like you then to kind of move across to the way that we've just come from. We're looking over the right shoulder, bringing our eye line up and across the ceiling, dropping it over our left shoulder and grazing it along our collarbone back to start. We're going to do that one more time on each side. But remember, as the guys behind me continue that method, if you reach a point of discomfort, work around the discomfort. So just gently cut out that particular part of the circle, if that makes sense, okay? Now we should be coming just to the final repetition. So as the guys behind me follow, I want you to go through it nice and slowly, okay? We're kind of finishing off just now, guys. And then as we bring ourselves back around, we're then gonna bring ourselves then into the position of the other leg combat base. Hands are kick stood behind you. From there, I want you to bring in your, what will be my right leg, tuck it underneath you, and just simply rock up and then position left leg for me in front of me. We're gonna go through this a little more fluidly now. You've got a good understanding of what you're doing. So for me again, I'm gonna add a little load to this knee, but you can kickstand your hands behind you as a regression. We're gonna draw some circles. I'm gonna go anti-clockwise, but again, if you're going clockwise, then just simply feel free to continue going in that direction. Guys, we're gonna do about 10 seconds and then we'll switch directions. So we've got one eye on this particular exercise and then the other eye on the following exercise, which is the shoulder rotations, and that will complete our mobility section of the session. Change direction whenever you're ready. So we're gonna turn the direction, I'm going clockwise. Remember not to couple the foot in, so the foot shouldn't really be rocking around right now, it should be remaining stable. Okay, let's go for four, three, two, one, now I'm gonna take my corresponding hand and pop it behind me, okay? I'm gonna turn my palm facing the ceiling this time of my right hand, reaching upwards towards the ceiling, palm up. Palm rotates, palm faces outwards, reaches back, and I'm continuing to rotate the hand back around, okay? My palm will face the side of the body, my knuckles face inside. I'm gonna go ahead and reach back, reach the roadblock, rotate the palm of the hand, all the way around, so it now faces inwards, it faces upwards as I bring it across the body. We'll do that one more time. Reach upwards, palm up, it goes around, palm faces out, bicep kind of turns inwards, reach back, palm turns outwards, and then the knuckles face inwards, one more time around, so we then return back to our regular position. Nice and slowly, guys. Remember to cut out any discomfort, bring it back round. Beautiful, okay, so now we've finished the main mobility section. So what we're going to do is start activating the gluteal region. So we're gonna lay down on our side. So very, very simply, just give yourself a little bit of space, pop your hands down, and we're gonna lay on our side. But what I'd like you to do for me is just ensure that your bottom elbow is situated underneath your shoulder that's closest to the floor. Otherwise, if our arm is out here, we're gonna receive a little pinching through our neck and shoulders. So make sure you've got that kickstand again. The bottom knee is gonna remain bent with the top leg extended. So you can organize the top leg first and then bring the bottom leg underneath you, okay? Now from here, the leg can't be too close towards you, but again, it won't give you much stability if it's too far away, so in between the two. From this position, guys, if you need to steady yourself, steady yourself with your hand, and just very simply raise the top leg. And what I'd like you to try to do while you raise the top leg is create traction down the leg, okay? So if it helps to point the toes or flex the toes to create a sort of a, a nice, rigid, stiff leg, 
Okay, do whatever you feel is more comfortable. Me personally, I would prefer the toes drawn towards me. That helps we move the next section. Just before we move on, because I know these guys will be feeling it all in this gluteal region already, is make sure that this little window remains. That's really important to engage the muscles between the ribs and the hips. Okay, I'm going to sit my top hand onto my top hip, and I'm going to very, very simply start to rotate my toes to the ceiling. I'm going to do that without the hip rocking backwards, so I'm going to keep my hips stable. My toes then point towards you, then they point towards the ceiling. And again guys, feel the natural end point that you get to and fight for more. So if you're able to turn the ball in the socket, okay, of that hip socket that is, if you're able to turn it a little further, please try and turn it a little further, okay? So we're going to stay here guys, just for a few more seconds. And then we're going to work into a little more advanced work that's going to engage the side of the body just a tad more. Okay, and it's also going to engage the glute a little more as well. We're going to involve more muscles. Okay, so we're going to turn the toes upwards towards the ceiling. As we turn those toes upwards towards the ceiling, you'll feel the ball moving around in the hip socket. I don't want you just to go to the point that's comfortable. I really want you to fight for more range. So if you're able to, guys, just try and get that little bit extra out of that ball in socket. We're going to go for about 10 seconds. If you feel as though you need a little bit more stability, go ahead and pop the hand down. The hand, again, can remain on the hip. Let's go for five, four, three, two. Turn the toes up, hold it there. Okay, that's a tough one. You might find a little shake. Try and see if you can squeeze the foot back a little just to gain a little bit more extension. We're going to go for five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the knee in for me. Now, part of the dynamic body weight Pilates is to make one exercise join with the next. So we're going to go straight up. And what I'd like you to do for me is bring yourself up onto your hand, push up, okay? Extend the top leg again, which won't want to extend. It's going to be quite uncomfortable. From there, guys, again, create traction, little lift through the side of the body, and I want you to bend at the knee and extend at the knee. So now we're starting to involve a few more muscles, okay, that were involved before, but not in the same way. So from here, guys, remember to keep all of this locked in nice and tight, okay? The bottom leg is likely to be working as well this time. Now, Liam's going to show you a more progressed version. I'm going to do it with him. So to get into the progressed version, we need to put the foot down. The top foot will be the front foot. When I lift and extend the bottom leg, that becomes the back foot because I need freedom in the front leg. Top hand reaches up and we simply continue with the same exercise that we were using leading up to this point. I'm going to go for another 10 seconds now, guys. Okay. Keep breathing. Let's go for five, four, three, two, one. Simply drop, pop the hand down, fold at the knees. Now what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to go into a stretch. Now to stretch, our top leg is going to become our forward leg. So I'm going to bring my top leg over and I'm going to scoot myself so I can then bring myself a little more upright. So your bottom leg is tucked under, the top leg remains the top leg. Okay, so from here guys, what I now want you to do is kick stand, with my, in my case the left hand, so the folded knee is going to be the stretch side, so raise up. Now try to get as much tension through the side of the body as you can. So imagine from here, your ribs are being pulled away from your hip line. So what I want to do from there guys, I want to then just gently dip or tip to the side of the room. And what we're doing is we're lengthening all of those structures down the side of the body. We're lengthening them and then we're asking, it's almost as though we're bowing the side of the body. Okay, take a couple of big deep breaths in there and breaths out obviously. So what we do is we breathe in, we expand all of those structures a little more. So let's go for five, four, three, two, and then relax there. Now, we're now going to be supine, so I want you to lay on your back, okay? Now, as we lay on our back, just simply scoot yourself around, 
Okay, I'm just going to move my mic. As we bring ourselves down onto our back, shuffle around so you can find a little bit of room. I'm going to need a little leg space, okay? So, because we're going to extend the legs out in front of us. From this position, guys, oblique rotations, our fingertips just simply wrap around the back of the head. The elbows are nice and wide. Keep the elbows just in your peripheral vision. So that way we can control them. We'll know whether they're coming round if we can set them, if we acknowledge where we've set them to begin with. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, simply bring both knees up into a tabletop position. Knees joined or knees apart, I don't mind. Okay? From there, guys, I want you to take a breath in. Upon the breath out, raise the head and shoulders once and hold. Now, I'm going to extend the leg that's closest to you. So I'm going to extend my right leg. My left knee is still bent here. So I'm going to rotate my sternum over to that left knee. Upon the bending of the right knee, the knee that's closest to you, I'm going to return back and I'm going to slowly roll down. Let's do that again, but let's go to the opposite side. Head and shoulders lifted on the exhale. From here, we extend the left leg and rotate our sternums towards you guys, okay, and my right knee. Back to centre, as the knee comes in, we roll our head and shoulders down. Now, we're going to continue, because I want to talk to you about progressions and regressions. So, to regress, first of all, if you feel as though that's a little bit too hard, Gemma's going to show you that she's going to lay down, she's going to bring herself down, going to stay down, and just simply utilise the leg positioning, okay? So the leg positioning in itself, if you go back to beginner sessions, that's simple leg extensions. However, Liam's going to show you the progress version. I'm going to do this one with him. This time we're going to extend both legs and again, moving towards. We haven't got a knee to work with this time. So we're going to work our sternum towards the opposite hip. That's the easiest way to think of it. Okay. Now I'm going to continue with the standard version and I'm going to give you a countdown from 10. Okay. There's no hold for nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Now, I'd like you to finish with turning to the right knee so we can get in as many on the left side as we can the right side, okay? After you've finished on the right side, bring yourself back to center, roll your head and shoulders down, and simply rock your feet back down onto the floor. Okay, so now we've brought the legs down, we're now going to turn to prone, which means simply laying on our front. So what I'd like you to do is very simply turn around for me, okay? So we are now laying down on our front. Now, just for ease, so you can see me a little better, I'm now going to bring myself up and I'm going to turn my back to you because I want to explain a little more about what's happening through our shoulder joint and through our shoulder blades. So what I'd like you to start by doing for me is place the fingertips across the back of the head for me. Okay. So as the fingertips are on the back of the head, I want you to again engage through the belly button, take a breath in. As you breathe out, Liam and Gemma are now going to raise their head and shoulders from the floor and squeeze their shoulder blades back. They're then going to reach out to the sides of the room. Now as they reach out to the sides of the room, they're going to turn their palms facing the ceiling. They're then going to reach back and slowly drop their hands across the lower back and the top of their glutes. Then from there, they're going to reach back up to the ceiling and then simply rotate the arms, rotate their hands across the back of the skull. Then they're simply going to lay their head and shoulders back down again. And that's simply rep one. From there, breath in to breath out, raise head and shoulders, squeeze the shoulder blades back. From this position, you're then reaching out to the sides of the room, rotating through the glenohumeral joint, which is simply the shoulder joint, resting hands across the back, and then from there, reach to the ceiling and simply bring the hands back to the same position as which we started. Now, time under tension makes this exercise just a little bit harder. So you will see now that Liam's staying up in that extended position. Gemma's going to keep doing what we were doing previously. So what Liam's has to do now, he has to work hard to keep his glutes engaged. His lower back's going to be a little engaged as it helps the glutes, but he's also creating, you can see that he's creating traction through his legs as well. Okay, so he's got that triple extension, hip, knee, and ankle joint. Guys, we're going to go for 10 seconds. Okay, for you guys, I want you to try, see if you can do the advanced version if you're able to. 
but feel free to simply drop down in between if you need to. Let's go for five, four, three, two, and just finish that repetition, guys. Bring your hands back to your head, lower yourself down. Now, from, from that prone position, it nicely brings us into the next exercise. So we'll push up with our hands, we'll rock back onto our heels, but firstly, we'll just separate those, those knees, sit back and reach out in front of you. Okay, so you're in that shell stretch, dropping your head down between your arms, and feel free to favor one arm over the other. You might decide just to kind of simply put a little bit more body weight into your right arm and then your left arm, okay? And spend a little bit of time on the side that offers you the most feedback that's a little tighter, okay? Now from there, you're gonna then simply bring your hands back and roll the spine up. So imagine that you're just very, very simply rebuilding the spine back from the bottom to the top, so your head is the last thing to come up, okay? We're gonna shuffle ourselves around by, but by stay facing you, obviously. So as I walk my knees around, it then enables me to bring myself back down onto our sides, okay? So from this position, we're going back into the two exercises that we were using before, okay? We're gonna bring our elbow down, okay? Remember that little window that you have, make sure that you've engaged that. Bottom knee remains bent, and top leg is extended. If you need to lower it for the time being, please do, but we're then gonna lift it up, Okay, my toes are pointing you, but I don't mind too much if the toes are pointed. I need you for you to remain in that kind of traction-like position. Okay, leg extended. Top hand is better served on the hip, but feel free to stabilize your body if you need to. Okay, so from here, guys, I'm gonna keep my hand on hip and I'm gonna rotate my toes so they're going upwards towards the ceiling. Now, naturally, they'll just go for there or go to there. Try to fight for a little bit more range, and then I'm simply gonna turn my toes to point you guys, okay? So we're gonna continue working from that A to B position. The leg remains extended. I'm quite happy for you to sort of abduct a little more, but just be careful that when you abduct, that you're then engaging a lot more, okay? And that's not necessarily a good thing for this position. I want all of that deeper stuff to work over the superficial muscles. So we're working through this range. It's quite a tough one, right? It's quite a tough exercise. It looks very, very simple, okay? Just moving from A to B. But we're engaging all of that deeper stuff that very rarely gets worked. Okay, so we're gonna work for 10 seconds and then we're fluidly going into the next exercise. So that's going to be extended arm, okay? Now it's five, four, three, Two, now extend the foot upwards, start to pull the foot back a little, okay? Without overextending, I'm kind of pushing my tummy out so you can see that, my con the contours of my body. Engage through those abdominals, keep that window, five, four, three, two, and wrap it up there. Gently bring it in, give it a slap if you need to, okay? Then from that position, guys, I'm then going to push down, extend my arm, Okay, and I'm then gonna lift my hips up and extend my top leg, okay? So you kind of find yourself in that position already. You don't have to really move around too far, but feel free to sort of do that in more steps than what we did, okay? From that position, top hand stays on my top hip, and I'm going to bend, fold in the knee. I'm gonna bring it up, okay? It doesn't matter how high you bring it. You can bring it all the way into you, fight for that little bit more range, and I'm gonna extend. So the leg looks very similar to how it looked previously. It's going to bend, so bring it in again, and extend, okay? So now, because we've worked the lower glute already, it's likely to be quite fatigued, so you may not feel as strong in this position as what you did in the last position, okay? Little window remains, we're still side on, okay? A good analogy to use is you are simply between two planes of glass from head to hips, Okay, that's always a good one to use so there's no forwards or backwards motion. Again, remember, before we finish, we're gonna go into the progress version, but we need to stop to get into that progress version. Top foot becomes front foot, kickstand hand down, bottom foot becomes back foot. From there, top hand goes up, and then we very simply bend and extend through that top knee. And you may find as though you'll shudder a little more, which is absolutely fine. Okay, let's go for 10 seconds, guys, for nine, eight, seven, 
six, five, four, three, two, one more, extend, foot goes down, hand comes down, fold at the knees and fold at the hips. Well, that was tough, that was tough. <laughs> Top foot just simply stays the top foot, but we bring it over. Bottom leg is tucked underneath us, but you'll find kind of yourself in a bit of a pretzel. So just position yourself on the mat somewhere that's more comfortable, okay? Bottom leg is going to be the stretch side. So my, my other hand, my opposite hand kickstands, okay? I then reach upwards towards the ceiling. Now remember, you're likely to, to feel more tension on one side than the other. This side I feel more tension, so I've got to do my very best to reach up before I then reach over. And you may need to just kind of move the kickstand hand around so it enables you to create movement, otherwise we end up with the shoulder into the ear. So move it around to a position that suits you. So remember to reach up before reaching over. And try to create that bow. Move your hips around so it creates that bow, because you, you it may not be enough for you just to extend upwards and then start to arc over. You might need to try and press the hip down a little bit more. Try to shift your weight into the side um, uh, that's, that's stable, okay? So let's go for four, three, two, and one. The guys behind me are gonna bring their hand back. The other two hands are gonna go behind you, okay? Now you may need to do this in sort of two or three movements, and that's absolutely fine. But we're gonna bring ourselves into a squat position, but we're gonna transition, okay, from where we are to squat. So what I want you to do is just simply bring your front leg back out to the side. I want you then to bring your bottom leg out underneath you. Bring yourself into a wide stance and start to tip forwards. Now as you tip forwards, start to walk your hands, okay? So you're in a position of either a deep squat or a regress version, you can kind of come up a little bit, okay? So in that deep squat, just take advantage of that position for a few seconds. It's kind of almost like an active rest. So we're doing something, we're making use of our time, but we're also starting to stretch the inner thigh a little, okay? Let's take some nice, a couple of nice deep breaths in. And let that breath go. And another one. Let that breath go. And then we'll simply stand from that position. As we stand, we need to replace our feet position. So I'm just on the court on the edge of my mat, so I'm gonna take a couple of steps back. I'm gonna turn my toes so they're not as externally rotated, okay? And position myself ready for just a regular air squat. So my hand's gonna be pressed in kind of like a prayer position, and I'm gonna simply drop my hips back, okay? And then from there, your inhale breath, your exhale breath comes just simply by standing up. And the guys behind me are gonna continue, okay? So I'm gonna be working at a little slower pace, but the guys behind me continue. What I want you to do, I want you to look at the knee positions of the guys behind me and from what I'm about to do. I don't want the knees to start buckling inwards, all right? So the reason we started to work around the ankle joint at the beginning of the class is so that we can, it enables us to control our knee on top of our ankle. So what I'd like you to do for me is just ensure that you've got a little bit more body weight on the outer border of your foot and the heel side of your foot opposed to the toes and the softer inside border. Okay, now we're gonna fluidly go into a skater, okay? We're gonna skate with the left leg. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to remember to keep the legs aligned, okay? But when we drop, which we're about to, okay? Hold this position, start to walk the feet a little closer to the, together, okay? So I'm just kind of walking them in and come up about 25%. So if this was my deepest position, just a little above my deepest position. Your hands can remain in exactly the same position they were. But this time with our left foot, we're gonna go onto the tippy toe. So I've now transferred my body weight over to my right leg, okay? From here, guys, I'm then going to tap out with my left leg and bring it back in again. Tap out and bring it back in. So it's a very simple movement and we often get tied up with the moving leg, but it's the stable leg that I want you to control. And I want you to think of the cues that I gave you before, which is co to continue keeping this leg in the same position. I don't want to see those knees rolling inwards or outwards, okay? So try to keep yourself as stable as possible. You might decide just to kind of look down the knee, just so you can have, a, have an idea of where your knee is in space. We're gonna go for 10 seconds, but again, guys, we're gonna fluidly 
go into the next exercise, okay? So I'm going to turn to the side, and the guys behind me are going to turn to the side as well, okay? So let's go for five, four, three, two. Now bring your foot back in. I'm going to turn around to the side so my leg is camera leg. You can see my leg, okay? From here, we're going to go to a lunge to balance. So I'm going to take the leg that's furthest away from the screen, I'm going to step back. Now as I step back, I'm then lowering myself down into that lunge position. I'm then going to take an inhale breath. On my exhale breath, I'm then going to drive from that front leg and bring it out in front of me. So my knee is directly in front. Okay? That same leg is going to scoop behind me. So I'm going to scoot it behind me and lower myself down into the lunge position. Then I'm going to drive from that front leg, and it's then going to come out in front of me. Okay, so from we're going to continue to keep going, guys. Now you've got a good understanding of what we're doing. It does require a little bit of balance and control. Okay, so if you feel as though you're about to lose your balance, safety is the most important thing here. So if you feel as though you're losing your balance, okay, very very simply tap the foot down. We can use the leg. That's not generating force to keep us stable. Okay, so feel free to tap down. Gemma Ray is going to show us that regressed version. Okay, now I'm going to have you guys at home go for another 10 seconds, and we're then all going to hold our knee out in front of us. Apart from Gemma Ray, that is, who's going to show us the regressed version. So from here, let's go for 10, 9, 8, 7. Six, five, four, three, two. Now we'll hold this last one. Let's drive up and hold it. Okay. Squeeze the glute of which is the supporting leg. Nice tall positioning. Okay. Hold for me. Let's go for four, three, two. If the foot's raised, then simply lower it down. I'm going to turn, and my guys behind me are going to turn. We're going to simply start to walk our feet into a comfortable position, okay, a little outside of hip width, and we're then prayer position hands, lowering ourselves down. So now the squat is serving like an active rest, okay. If you do need to have a break, or you would like to continue to become active or be active, but you'd like to have a stretch, feel free to use the deep squat that we were using leading up to this exercise. So that's a really good alternative. Okay. Nice big deep breaths on the way down. Nice breaths on the way out. Okay. Let's go for five, four, three, two. Lower to hold. Now start to walk the feet a little closer together because it's going to be too hard to have them that far apart. So they're a little narrower now. Okay. From here, guys, it's tippy toes this time of our right foot. Okay. Whatever foot that you've decided to lift. Okay. We're going to opposite side. From here, breath in to breath out. We then reach out to the side with our foot and simply bring it back in. Okay. Now, one thing I didn't really go through in the previous exercise, guys, but I'm going to go through now. The regression is simply to reset. So, if you feel as though you need to stand up for a few seconds and then drop back down, just try to drop back down to the degree that you were using before. Okay. For those of you who can work a little harder, feel free to drop a little deeper, but try not to compromise your technique. As you drop down deeper, you'll find it really hard to keep your technique. Okay. Now we're going to run through this again for between 10 and 15 seconds. Okay. Remember what's next. We're going to go from lunge to balance. Okay. My guys and me will turn to the side so you can see the angles of the hip, knee, and ankle joint. Let's now go for five. Four, three, two. We'll bring our foot back in. We'll turn around so you guys can see us. Okay. We're then going to lunge back, drop the knee down, generate the force through the working leg, so that our knee is lifted out in front. And again, you might feel a little different this side from compared to the other. Foot goes behind you. We lower and then drive from that leg. Bring the knee out in front of you. Okay, I was a little bit wobbly there, guys. Okay, dropping back, down, and drive. 
Try to remain sort of constantly breathing in and out. Try not to hold your breath. If you need a suitable breathing pattern, breathe in on the lowering part of the movement, breathe out as you generate the force through that left leg to bring you back up to that sort of standing single leg position. Okay? Now guys, we're gonna go again for another 10 seconds, and that's kind of our lower, lower body workout for today. So from here, we're gonna go for seven, six, five, four, three, Two. Now let's drive up for the last one. We're trying to mirror what we did in the previous exercise. So we'll drive up, we'll hold ourselves. You might find a little twitching around the ankle joint, which is quite normal. Okay. Nice, tall, upright posture. Let's go for five, four, three, two. The foot comes down for me, please, guys. Excellent. Okay. Now you can shuffle the legs out. Okay, we're gonna stay facing this direction. So as we stay facing this direction, guys, go ahead and take a step back with your left leg. It's gonna be our left leg, okay? So it's gonna be the leg that's closest to, to the screen and then drop ourselves down onto our knee, okay? Now, right now, I'm kind of a little on top of myself. So very, very simply, I'm gonna take a step forwards. So the ankle joint is just a little further forwards than the knee joint, okay? And again, with the leg that's closest to the screen, you can kind of see that my knee somewhat aligns with my hip. If anything, it should be just moved just a very, very small amount back. I don't want to create too much lumbar extension here, okay? So a tall position as we go to stretch the hip flexor, I want you to generate a posterior tilt. So I want you to almost tuck the tailbone. So what helps us there is the squeeze that we can create through, in this case, the left gluteal region, the left butt cheek, okay? And as we squeeze that, you may find that there's a little tension in the front of the thigh already. If you don't feel that, then you may need to just edge forwards a tad, but just edge forwards in incremental amounts. Don't suddenly shift all your body weight forward because I'm doing my best not to create that lumbar curve. I'm trying to keep the stretch local to, to that hip flexor, okay? Keep taking nice, big, deep breaths in and just keep fighting for a little bit more, but again, don't compromise on the, the, uh, the, the structure of the body. So let's go for four, three, two, Ease yourself out of that stretch. Now, we're gonna go into what's called a 90-90, okay? My front leg is gonna remain my front leg, okay? I'll have the two guys behind me stay in the posi same position, but I will soon face the, the, uh, the screen so you can see me from a front view. So I'm gonna pop my hands down on the floor and I'm gonna very, very slowly start to shift my foot towards you. I'm then gonna use my hands as kickstands and I'm gonna bring myself down so my right butt cheek is now on the floor. So the reason it's called 90-90 is because I'm looking for the thigh, okay, to be perpendicular with my sternum. So as I look forwards, I've got this nice 90 degree angle in front of me. And then as I look behind me, you can kind of see that that's not 90. So I'm just gonna simply move my knees around until I'm in that 90-90 position, okay? Now, I'm gonna turn front view so you can see me and it helps me kind of guide you through the next part. So from here, we're likely to be moving to the side. So kickstand, push yourself up, lift your chest. And what I want you to try to do for me is I want you to just almost just shift your belly button forward slightly without creating or feeling any discomfort. So your pelvis should just tip forwards. So what we're doing is we're moving our hip relative to our thigh bone, okay? And the muscles around that gluteal region stretch a little more. Okay, so we shouldn't need to collapse forwards with that gentle tipping forwards of the waistband. That should give you enough of a stretch, okay? Again, if it's uncomfortable, which this position is, can be quite uncomfortable, try to take nice big deep breaths in and out, okay? Let's hold the stretch, guys, for five more seconds. <clears throat> for four, three, two, and one. Excellent. Now from there, we're gonna bring ourselves into kneeling. The guys behind me are gonna face the same direction. I'm gonna go back to where I was before. So we'll tuck the front leg underneath us, okay? And then we'll simply drag the other leg around. You can low kneel. If you feel it's uncomfortable in low kneeling, simply high kneel, or alternatively, you can just sit cross-legged or in the position that you feel best, 
okay? From here, guys, we're gonna take our hands, okay? We're gonna lace up our fingers and start to draw our shoulder blades a little closer to one another. From there, we'll lift our eye line and we'll simply raise our hands from our torso. Okay, if that's a little uncomfortable, then just simply use the, the, the first few steps. So just draw the two shoulder blades back, okay? If you feel comfortable with that, and again, there's other areas of the body in which you'll need here, we can simply, and I'll get Liam to demonstrate with me, we'll put our hands back behind us, okay? We'll open out the chest and shoulders, tuck our tailbone, and just very, very slowly generate the force through our hips, okay? Just to open out what's happening through the hips and chest and shoulder region, okay? Then from this position, we'll lower ourselves down, We'll bring those hands round the front, lace up our fingers, open out our chest and shoulders, dropping the chin down onto the chest. So it's almost as though you're trying to pull out the thoracic vertebrae, so the, the vertebrae that's in the center of your spine, you're trying to pull it out from between the shoulder blades. Okay, drop your chin down onto your chest as you do that. And you can kind of see the guys behind me, they've created that nice C shape. Let's go for three, two, and one, bring yourself back up for me. Now we'll stay facing the same direction for ease, okay, but we'll bring ourselves back up. Now we may need to kind of move around the mat, so you go ahead and do the same, but as we move around the mat, this time it's going to be my left foot forward, my right leg is back. But now you've got a firm understanding because we're now sort of duplicating what we've done on the previous side. So nice tall posture, quick review of angles, the ankle joint is just a little forwards from the knee joint, okay? On the trailing leg, the knee joint is just slightly behind the hip joint, but not by far. Tall posture, okay? Posterior tilt as well, okay? So ensure that, that's really important. Squeeze through that glute, and then, if you feel as though you need to, just slowly migrate forwards, incrementally. So if it's not enough, then again, you can move forwards just incrementally so you can feel the stretch, okay? Some nice deep breaths in and breaths out here. Good, let's go for five, four, three, two. We'll then bring ourselves out of the stretch first, but this time it's gonna be my left leg forward in 1990. So again, I'm gonna place my hands down on the floor, I'm gonna walk my foot to my right hand, furthest hand away from the screen, and I'm then going to bring myself down into that 1990 position. Okay, so from here guys, again, just use, use the, the 90 90 as our start point, okay? Back leg 90, front leg 90. I'm gonna to turn towards you very shortly. Chest is lifted up. We want to go in this direction, but I'm gonna push myself to that upright. Sternum lifted. We go into a slight anterior tilt, okay? So it's that analogy of a bucket of water where the, the water is sloshing out of the front of the bucket as we tip it forwards, okay? My belly button is being drawn outward slightly, but not to the discomfort of my lower back, okay? So from that front view, you can kind of see head on, okay? Chest is lifted. I've got that 90-90. I've got kickstand hand, okay? And I'm very, very gently migrating forward just to see if I can edge out that little bit more movement. All right, breaths in, breaths out. Let's go for five, four, three, two, and one. Gently bring yourself back, okay? You're then going to re-tuck the leg underneath you, okay? Hands go down onto the floor, and then just bring yourself back, okay? Now as we kneel down, so we're now sort of facing you, you guys are facing us. My hands are going down, and I'm gonna move my feet underneath me, so I'm kind of crouched up into a ball. I'm gonna rock back onto my heels, and as I rock back onto my heels, dependent on how much flexibility you have through your hamstrings, you can either go ahead and extend the legs first before we roll up, or you can roll up from a bent knee position. So from here, I'm gonna roll up from bent knee position, but feel free to extend the legs, we then slowly extend the legs as we start to roll up through the spine. And it's almost as though we're rebuilding the spine brick by brick, and then we're slowly bringing our head up at the very end. 
We're going to raise our hands up together this time rather than independently how we started this morning. Turn your palms outwards towards the side. Okay, palms facing out. Then you're slowly bringing your arms around. Bring your arms in and give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you very much for joining us within this intermediate class. It's been a tough class. It's been tough for these guys as well. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you again.